Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Nanaliz at Dawn. I'm your host, Shadow Fury 333 and we're back with more exhibition matches. Well, I guess the first one of the day, which is going to be Saniac versus Topcac on Onyx Cauldron. So let's get started. Saniac going for the gunship plant, while Topcat goes for the Cloakbot factory, and I'm... I mean, gunship plant is not a bad choice. This map is fairly large, so I can see why we'd want to have flyers, and also... There's a fairly common cheese in this map where you take gunship factory plant units, go, you go around the side here, go up the back, and then go into your opponent's base. And it's quite effective. Not sure if we're going to see Steen yet go for that, but they are getting the locusts up, which means they are getting prepped for that. And for those of you who are vaguely familiar with Zero K, that is the new name of the Banshee. It is now the Locust. I'm not sure when I'm going to stop pointing out that the names have changed. Probably in a couple weeks. I think by that point people have gotten used to the new names, or at least people will understand that, no, I'm using the new names now. Except if I forget and slip back into the old names, because I'm... I'm learning them, but I don't think I've got them perfectly down. Anyway, at this point, Saniac's gonna be gonna be spotted out. Topcac does have a glaive coming into Saniac's base. That should be able to spot things, unless... No, Saniac's going for... Oh, what... I gotta know. What is known? What is known? Topcac... Topcac doesn't know. Topcac has no idea yet. That... Oh boy, that could have been big. Because we are seeing... Ooh. Seeing Nats as well. So Nat Locust set up. I don't see anything set up to go around the back. Which tells me that Saniac is not really intending for this to be a massive cheese. But at the same time, they are setting up for it. It's just... I, It's kind of slow. I mean, at this point, Topcast expanded quite a bit. I mean, nothing out of the ordinary. But considering what Saniac has done so far is basically just hold their main base... I think Topcac might suspect something. They can't easily get in to find out, but why else would a player lock themselves in their base and not do anything? Probably because they're doing G's. That's usually why. I mean, it could be that they're just not expanding because that's not a thing they're doing, but generally speaking, people expand because this game, you want to expand. As we're seeing, Topcac is continuously doing. So that's how you get your that's how you get the game to work in your favor. That's what you want to do. And when players don't do that, it's usually a sign that they're do up to up to no good. They have something sneaky planned, and I think actually, no, well, they definitely okay. There's definitely no knowledge yet. Topcac, Topcac, do you know? You do not know. Although you are fairly well. No, you're not well defended. You have no defenses at all. Saniac's going to be able to come in here and just wreak havoc. There's nothing to stop this. There's one, two glaives. No, no pickets. Not even a lotus. Nothing is here to bring this to a stop. Right now, Saniac's only weakness is that they don't have a huge amount of, of locusts coming in here. And the glaives are doing a fine enough job keeping them at bay. Two or three more locusts, this would have worked reasonably well. But Topcac was on point. They had enough money. They took full advantage of their expansions. And made that really pay off. So at this point, Saniac, they're in a bit of a retreat, but I wouldn't say they're on the back foot. Topcac does have the economic advantage, though they were accessing a little bit, and they are a little low on energy. But overall, the problem being is Topcac can't really get into Saniac's base right now. Saniac is reasonably well defended on top of all their troops here. Although Saniac going for another attack, this actually does leave things open. Topcac could come in at great loss to their army, mind you. This is not going to be free. But they could break the defenses, at least briefly. Topcac, however, does not realize Saniac's already prepared for this. Saniac going straight for the Harpy, and Harpy's one-shot glaives. So there's not a whole lot to be said about that. And here comes the second attack, as this is what I kind of figured that Saniac would do, seeing as we were moving forward, but it's actually working out all right this time. At least it would be if the Locusts were going after the glaives. However, they are going after the Cloakybot factory instead, and that's getting repaired far too quickly. No real damage being dealt to it, and while it's, I mean, it's definitely valiant for them to try, it's not the approach that's going to be successful. At the same time, Topcat going in for the counterattack, which will make Saniac's life a bit miserable. Only one Harpy in play. Two, the second is coming up, but it's coming up slowly, and there's loads of room for Topcat to get in here and deal boatloads of damage. Possibly get rid of Saniac's commander. They have more than enough glaze for this. You only need six. Actually, against a Recon Commander, you might only need four, but 
Six is definitely more than enough. And with the gunship line going down, unfortunately the glaives... No, not gonna die. Nicely done, Top Gag. Unfortunately, it's not quite enough. The explosion did manage to kill them. But I'm still glad they went for that. That is always the thing I want to see people go for when they're killing anything that'll have a massive death explosion. Like, you know, it's got a massive death explosion. It's gonna deal 600 damage within this radius. Get out of there. Or at least in the case of the Shieldbot Factory. I'm fairly certain all factories do the same. But yeah, that's a big thing in keeping your armies alive. Whenever you're attacking, always make sure that you don't leave your units to die in the death explosion of what you're attacking. Regardless, though, Topkak is taking full advantage of the massive expansion they had at the start of the game, and Saniac, they're trying to get back with Reclaim. Not a bad choice, but at the same time, they don't have a whole lot of options to expand. They finally have some convicts going over to the northeast, but given that Topkak's already taken that pretty handily, and the fact that there's no easy way for Topkak to... I'm sorry, for Saniac to get support in, Topkak should have no problem dealing with this. The Harpy doing a decent job providing some resistance, but... Honestly, the sheer amount of glaives coming in here, if it weren't for the fact that they're trickling in one by one, and we already see that Topkak has to some extent corrected that, it would be over already. As it is, Topkak is just keeping Saniac completely pinned in their base. There is no way that Saniac can expand here easily. If they still had the gunship plant, if they had a wasp, they might have been able to get over here to the northwest without worrying about this light blockade. But at this point, they can't easily get convicts there. The one convict they have gotten out is being targeted. Topkak's fully aware of what's going on. This is not going to end well for Saniac. Although, thankfully for them, they are moving the convict away. It's just, it's only a matter of time. There's a possibility the Harpy will be able to take care of all the glaives before the convict gets approached, and that possibility is slim. In fact, it's coming down to nil, as really, Saniac has very little to build to defend this. But it's, it is barely enough. That's going to do it. Saniac managing to save their own convict with the Harpy. I mean, that's what I mean. That is a strong defensive option against the Glaives. But we should see... There's the, there's the Ronin. Should see an army switch. Either Ronin or Jethro... Or Gremlin. Wow, I was going back way back to seeing Jethro. <laughs> Ronin or Gremlin are the other options that can come in here. But I don't see... I don't see Gremlins. I don't see any real reason for Gremlins. The gunship plant was destroyed. Ronin's a good choice. It's going to be able to take care of the outlaws no problem. And also deal with any shielded units fairly easily as well. Because shields provide a very large target that Ronin have no problem hitting. Although, unfortunately, that's... Ah, this is going to be it for the Convict. RP getting a bit distracted by the Metal Extractors. Though, honestly, that's probably the better option. The Convict... It would have been nice for the Convict to survive. It would actually have been really nice for the Convict to survive. Come to think of it, that would have allowed for a rebuild over here with Saniac, giving them a lot of room to expand. Come to think of it, that was actually a massive loss. Saniac losing that Convict, while it's not... I mean, it might not have gotten them back into the game, it was the hope they had. It might have gotten them back in the game. It might have given them a fighting chance, given them some resources, but having lost that convict, they can certainly damage Topkak's economy, but Topkak's economy is so high compared to Saniac's. It's triple Saniac's at this point, and Saniac cannot convert that. They don't have the convict with which to do so. They have the Harpy to take it out, and that's only stage one. But at this point, Topkak just realizes there's no reason not to push in. I mean, they have like 6,000 metal worth units coming in here against, what, 1,600? There's hardly anything in Saniac's favor right now. That one Harpy is the main thing Saniac has to keep them in this, and that won't be enough. And Saniac's not even noticing that anymore. Topkak is pretty much entirely taking their attention, and that is going to take the game. Saniac throwing in the towel after a bit of cheese. Not bad cheese, but... I mean, I'm starting to think that Nat Locust is not a bit good idea. And I used to use Nat Locust all the time. I totally understand the idea. It's just, it's cool in theory, because you'd stun out whatever you want to hit, and then you destroy them with the Locusts. The downside is timing. Getting the Nats and the Locusts up all at once is tricky to do. Oftentimes, when I see players go for that kind of cheese, they'll go for Harpies instead. Or Rapiers, back in the day. That's what they'll do. It's easier for hit and run. It deals a lot more damage, just without worrying about staying in and fighting. So it's less vulnerable to glaives. And also, it tears up park glaives. So there's not a whole lot of risk there. Anyway, that was that. So we're going to be moving on to the next game, which will be a game between... Let's see, it should be... I believe North Chilean G and RAR. That is correct. It is on Red Comet. It'll be up in a couple minutes, so stay tuned. <laughs> 